Yay. I get to hang out with my cool friend Jackie and Jackie and I find cool people just to talk to. And we, we talk about things that will for sure help you along with your very own life mastery journey. Great tools, great thoughts and ideas. And we present them for you to use or to put in your pocket and pull out later. No matter what, we're planting seeds. Right, Jackie? That's right. We're little gardeners. <laughs> before we <laughs> before we start the show, I always like to get myself centered and situated and in the groove and get ready for some great thoughts and ideas. We have a really cool guest with some really great thoughts today. So let's get ready for that. And I do that by just relaxing a little bit, lower those shoulders, and let's take in a deep breath all the way down deep. And let that breath out with a big ah. And just let your essence flow up through your heart center, up through your throat chakra, and right out of your speaker box, out into the universe. Ah. Think about what it is you connect to. What gives you power? What is it that you connect to? It could be the tree, it could be God, it could be Allah, it could be the dude, it could be the door that leads to your office, anything. Just focus on that, which gives you peace and solace. And now let's think about our dreams, visions, and goals. What is it that we want to accomplish? We're almost halfway through the year, but let's focus on those a little bit. What is it that you aspire to be? Let's take in another deep breath. And again, let that breath out with a big ah, and just let it flow right out of your speaker box, out into the universe, ah, and for sure. Allow the universe to make those come true for you. Uh, hi, Jackie. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? You, you, you're all Hawaii'd out today. Is that yes? Is there... Yes. This is my my Mother's Day gift that is still got a few more days of life to it, but it is a very fresh lay from the island of Maui. It was Who went to Hawaii. No one did. It was ordered oh. and and shipped to me. In fact. <laughs> Shipping probably costs as much as the lay does. <laughs> <laughs> it's very pretty. I don't think I've ever seen a yellow one. It's actually green. It's, it's showing up a little bit yellow on the, on the screen, but it's it's green. And it's tuberose, so those are very, very fragrant. You know, we, my husband and I have been married for 38 years, and he has never failed to give me flowers for Mother's Day. Nice. Sometimes it's been a corsage. Sometimes he's actually made a corsage. And then for the past probably five years or so, he's been sending me a lay from Maui. So, <laughs> yay, you go, Arnie. Husband. You go, Arnie. <laughs> Makes all the other husbands look really bad. <laughs> Arnie's a pretty cool dude. Man. He's also a very good friend of mine. So, good job, Arnie. Way to be. <laughs> and, but there's another special occasion. Tomorrow oh. is Todd's birthday. <laughs> so. We've got to sing a little happy birthday. I'm not a great singer, but I'm willing to embarrass myself for you, Todd. Okay. okay. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Todd. Happy birthday to you. I don't, I don't know why you why you say you can't sing that's quite the set of pipes i think you did very well ah uh, thanks but you're gonna be i don't know do you want to tell the age of course okay. 60 years young 60 <laughs> years old tomorrow you're just life is just beginning totally <laughs> and we're gonna find out what i can do and what i should be doing to make it even that much more sweeter with our guests right. today so i'm really excited because yeah i you know I've had a shot across the bow and we'll talk about that a little bit. And, and it was life changes. I think it's a life changing event. And it's just a way of waking up thinking, Oh, you know, I need to pay attention a little bit more. I think you can get another 60 years in. That's what I think. <laughs> I do. You know what they say, Jackie, it's really cool. I heard the other day that children are being there. There's a child being born right now that will live to be a thousand. Really? I heard Who's that. saying that? <laughs> I heard that. I heard really? that the other day because of huh. the technology and, and what they're finding. And uh, there's some amazing research. So 
who knows? Well, we are definitely learning how to how to have more longevity in life and how to live with less medical problems. And so I don't I don't disagree that we could probably live past 100 pretty easily. A thousand? I don't know if I want to live that long. <laughs> I do. That would be amazing. <laughs> Just think of all the wisdom you would collect. Yeah. Noah yeah. lived that long. Noah lived that long. Many, many yes, other people. I mean, him. they... Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, when you think, when I think of longevity, I always think of the Galapagos tortoise because, <laughs> you know, and you look at the faces of these tortoises that have lived on the earth for hundreds of years now. And you yeah. think there is so much wisdom there. And you think about all of the risks they've had to their lives, whether it be storm or predators or illness or, you know, so many things. And yet they've made it. It's pretty amazing and fascinating. Jackie, Jackie's a tortoise lady. That's, that's, that's I think it's kind of my spirit animal. Spirit animal. <laughs> of course it is. How could you say anything different? But you have some programs starting up. Tell us just a little bit about what you're up to at the Speak, Feed, Lead project. Well, as you know, we empower children through public speaking skills and camps and classes and courses and so forth. We are, we've now started all the, the last of the eight week courses that we have during the school year. So there's no more of those happening until fall, but we've got several classes. There's nine or 10 classes that are still working on getting done with these eight week courses, but we're starting the summer camps. We can't have them in person, but they are virtual mini workshops three days a week throughout the summer. And they focus on all different things like improvisation, conversation, storytelling, competition speaking, TEDx type speeches. So there is a, there's a workshop for your child if they're in grades four through grade eight. We'll keep them busy and help them feel empowered throughout the summer. And I can't say, I can't highlight it enough that this kind of training, these, this, and it's training by doing. It's not any, you know, inject stuff into your brain. It's just <laughs> here, do this. And, you, you know, the biggest gift, I think, is, is a great sense of confidence. And this isn't a confidence that they come to your classes with. This is a confidence they use every day and for the rest of their life. So this is a huge booster. It's yeah, like a, what a booster shot. What I asked one of my students the other day, what do you think these classes have done for you? Because he's been through four, he's in the fourth unit of curriculum right now. And he said, he illustrated this, which, which proves exactly what these skills do for these kids. He goes... Before I started these classes, I would be like, hey, how you doing? Well, got to go. Bye. But now, he said, now I'll go, hey, I'm Zach. Who are you? It's nice to meet you. I want to find out everything I can about you. So tell me everything you like. <laughs> he just went on and on about how he's just so confident now to <laughs> have conversations with people and learn their story and so it's pretty incredible. And that's huge. <laughs> that is huge. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a future future leader of our world. I mean, that's just, that's that's what it does. So check it out. Yeah. Go to speakfeedlead.org <laughs> and check out Jackie's classes. It's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you, you can also find it. There's many, many links on Life Mastery Radio's Facebook page. Go there and like our Facebook page. After you've done that, go check out our website. We have a really cool website at lifemasteryradio.net or .com. Anything about the show, the today's show page is there. Any links that we talk about will be there. While you're there, you can check out Jackie and I's book. We both have a book. It's on Amazon. The links are there. What else is there? Oh, the newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. Jackie creates a newsletter every week about who's been on the show and who's coming on the show. And it she does. Last week, I, I, Jackie, you wrote a book last week. I was just blown away <laughs> no. at, at all the information that you came up with just for that show. It was pretty cool. Well, it was definitely a message that we needed to help get out. You know, oh yeah, like that was a very cool show. And, and uh, so many people need to hear it. And so it was nice that we had such a wonderful guest. And I just borrowed a lot of information she'd given in her book about how to how to know if you're living with someone who's prone to abusing you or you know violating you in some way so yeah. and now we're gonna have some war cool stuff 
that we're going to learn about some more tools. Our guest today is here we go. I'm I'm going to test my French. Our guest today is Celine Anid Leon Brozovich, and she is the founder of Bacon G Health, a health and productivity company created to build employee morale and reduce employer health care expenses. Oh my goodness. Celine was the director of customer service at McKeeson, a Fortune 10 company, and she won the coveted McKeeson President's Award for over the top achievers. Celine, are you an over the top achiever? I think Jackie and I are too. I think we both go there. In a nutshell, Celine works across an organization to teach and coach. She leverages lifestyle medicine. That's, that's her bailiwick, so to say. And her lifestyle medicine programs that are scientifically based and pro with proven results and sound business principles to deliver a program with sustainable results. The reason this is key now is that research has shown that worker productivity and just general productivity decreases by up to 46% when we are in poor health. Furthermore, the Center for Disease Control states as a fact that six out of 10 Americans suffer from chronic diseases like diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, et cetera. Celine's work as a coach and consultant addresses these issues directly. Did we put you on top of a mountain yet, Celine? Celine? <laughs> I just want to run away. I'm like, is that me? Uh-uh, can do that. <laughs> That's you. you welcome, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you today? Thank you very much. Thank you, Todd and Jackie, for having me. And I can't wait to share my passion with my fellow Toastmasters and all of your listeners. Thank you for having me. So, so define for us right out of the gate, lifestyle medicine. What does that mean? I mean, that's, that's a big thought and a big idea, but, but define it for us a little bit. Thank you. So lifestyle medicine is based on the following pillars. We say that what you put in your mouth, food, alcohol, drug, tobacco, water, medications. So we have the nutrition aspect. What you do with your body in terms of sleep, exercise, access to the sun, the type of product you choose to put on your skin, what you do with your mind in terms of prayer, meditation, connection to the divine, what you do with your relationship, forgiveness, having a support system, self-compassion, your life purpose. Do you know that life purpose? And the environment you live in, access to nature, if it's not polluted, when you manage all of those pillars in partnership with your medical doctor, this is called lifestyle medicine. And you're going to see that you can prevent and or reverse the chronic diseases that we have. So nutrition, your body, your mind, your spirit, your connectedness, your relationships, your life purpose and the environment. All of that manage every single day with the partnership with your medical doctor is lifestyle medicine. Wow. So my second question, you got a degree in electrical engineering. <laughs> you were big time corporate. I mean, the, the number 10 or, or the president's award from the number 10 Fortune 10 company. I mean, that, that took some drive and, and probably some passion. How did you end up being a advocate for lifestyle medicine? Thank you. This is a good question. This is life. So as you mentioned, I am an engineer. I'm also an MBA. And I was flying high. I loved my job. And my last job was fabulous. I was doing data science. I was creating those beautiful models for the entire company to use. And the more they love it, the more I was working. Absolutely no boundaries. 
I was working long hours. I was not sleeping. I was not exercising. I was not eating properly. All I was doing was work, work and work. Then <clears throat> what has to happen happened. I burned out, physical, emotional, mental, complete burnout, plus the uh, weight gain and chronic diseases, and even an attempt to, uh, to suicide, a close attempt to suicide. I was that close of, of doing it. Thank you to my sister, I'm alive. So I knew it, I, it couldn't go that way. I have two girls, I, am, I have a, a man who loves me, doesn't bring me the whole while yet, and we, and we need to have a talk. So I did the research and I ran into lifestyle medicine. It's like uh, taught to understand why I love lifestyle medicine is, I have been on a diet since age 12. So you name it, I have been on it. And lifestyle medicine, when I was reading about the nutrition made sense. I embarked into that journey. I lost the weight. The depression became under control. I could see, I could reflect, I can be happier again. And I decided, how come I did not know about that? Because the doctor that I was paying to help me was going to put me on medication for high blood pressure. And I told him, no. <laughs> You guys put my mom on medication for high blood pressure for 54 years. She developed a stroke, lost her mind. No, let's find another alternative. So after, recover, after my recovery, I decided I am a Toastmaster. I love to talk. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to share that information to as many people as possible because people don't know about lifestyle medicine. And we want to talk more and more and more about that, that there is hope, there is something that we can do. Did that answer that question? <laughs> it did. And you know, I'm, I'm in that boat, right? I, I went to the doctor and he's like, oh, your blood pressure is high. And no mention of any lifestyle changes, nothing. And he says, okay, here, Try, try this. And so he gave me a prescription and then he said, you're going to come back in a month and we're going to see monitor your progress. Came back in a month and he says, Oh, we need to bump it up a little bit. And I said, doc, how long am I going to have to take this stuff? And he looked at me and he says, well, probably for the rest of your life. And it, you know, that just hit me. It hit me kind of funny. But another part of me just bought into it, right? Because it's been in my family. I talked to my mom about it. She says, oh, yeah, we have a long history of high blood pressure in our family. Da, 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 da. And now, you know, after reviewing your material and just talking, I still don't feel right taking that pill every day. And I'm pretty sure that I can get to the point where I don't have to take that pill anymore. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Celine, before you answer that, I was going to ask you, can you, is this something that you had to advocate for yourself or are there doctors who will actually walk you through this and be a support for you? Two great questions and issues. So uh, Jackie, I had to advocate for myself because I was stubborn. And I told that doctor that, no, I saw what was happening to my mom and what happened to my mom. The beauty is when he saw my result, he started learning. So all now I was the one teaching him and dumping information on him. <laughs> and yes, you have doctors and it's growing, but not fast enough who are lifestyle medicine doctors. You have an association called the American College for Lifestyle Medicine. Mm. Those are medical doctors, board certified doctors who are part of that association. They even are issuing um, CMEs or additional degrees for doctors to be certified in lifestyle medicine. They are teaching them about you know, the, the power of food, of nutrition, the power of exercise, the power of the entire lifestyle. So they have now doctors, uh, it's growing where you can look and go and uh, they'll, they'll treat you with lifestyle medicine. 
So the ACLM, American College for Lifestyle Medicine, is where you want to go. And here in our own backyard, we have at Providence, a doctor called Dr. Kevin Clay. He's passionate about lifestyle medicine. Dr. Clay was successful as, uh, at bringing a lifestyle medicine program in cardiac rehab in Everett. So today, if you had a cardiac episode for your rehabilitation, they enroll you into a program called CHIP, the Complete Health Improvement Program. It's a wonderful, beautiful program. I'm asking Dr. Clay and I'm like, why do we have to wait for the cardiac event? Why mm -hmm. don't we do before? We are working on it. He says that it, it's happening. It's happening, it's too slow. And we can talk later about why is it that slow, but it's happening. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure it has a lot to do with awareness. We're, we've just been on such a growth drive and, and everybody's just been working themselves to death. And now I think, you know, we're backing up a little bit. Looking so, at lifestyle, right? I also, Celine, I don't mean to jump ahead of Jackie, but it was about a year, almost 18 months ago. And I was getting ready for an event. I hadn't eaten. I hadn't drank any water. I probably stayed up all night getting ready for this presentation. 10 minutes before the presentation, I had a TIA, right? That's a wake up call. So a mini stroke is what they call it. Ooh. Yeah. And it was like, you know, you got to take care of yourself, Todd. You, you are not getting any younger. So this, this was a huge wake up call. Yeah, that will. And this is one of the message I am bringing to founders, people who are entrepreneurs, people who have created companies and even professionals that, you know what, you can lose everything you've worked for just like that. Because just, here, like. He, just like that, every 36 seconds, one American is dying from a cardiovascular disease. Four seconds later, one is having a heart attack. And one out of five of those heart attacks will leave some permanent damage in that. And the cost to treat that heart attack could be, if you're lucky, 21,000 into the millions. So founders out there, do you have wellness as part of your disaster recovery plan? Because that heart attack happened just like that, especially knowing that six out of 10 Americans have a chronic disease, meaning we are not being very healthy. So let's talk more about that and tell people that the answer for that is in the prevention. Yeah. So what are some of the changes that you made, Celine, when you, when you lost, did you say 65 pounds you lost? Is that what you said? But between my husband and I, we lost, we lost uh, 100 pounds. He lost 63. I lost 37. Wow. So what were some of the changes that you made and how quickly did you see the difference? Good question. So I made a change on all the pillars, but let's talk number one about the nutrition. <laughs> When it comes to the nutrition, I did a whole food plant-based nutrition. And we'll talk about that in detail. I went 100%. This is not for the faint of heart. So in the lifestyle medicine movement, we say, if you can have your nutrition 80% or more plant slate, whole food plant slate, and I'll have to explain the difference between that and plant-based, you are okay. But in my case, because of all the pathologies, I went 100% whole food pen based. So every day I will eat from all five groups. Do, uh, let me ask you a question, Jackie. How many different plants do you, edible plants do you think are out there? Oh gosh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands. And it depends on where you live, right? 80 thousand different edible plants out there yeah. you have them in five groups your vegetables your legumes your fruits your um nuts. cereal and your nut and seed so every day i ate from all five groups drank plenty of water ate more green than anything else but every every group every five group i'll eat a little bit 
of it because you need to every group every food has a specialty so I'll, I'll do that every day i'll drink plenty of water i will exercise and i'll work also on the emotions you know uh, do that thing about, you know, gee, who am I mad at? You know, go to confession. I'm Catholic, so we go to confession. So confess and go deeper into the forgiveness. Forgiveness was, is key. When people say, if you don't forgive, it's as if you're drinking poison. Yes, it is right. I was drinking the poison and thinking that somebody else was, was going to die. I was putting myself in jail. When I released all of those people, I opened the door of the jail, it speed up the process. So I will say, I start seeing the first result, especially for the depression within a few weeks. Really, where, that fast? Yes, oh, that fast, oh, that fast, yeah, yeah. Within a few weeks, you start seeing results. And for the whole way to finish, I think it must have taken a year or so. Because the beauty is you don't crash on the weight loss. Your body slows down to heal itself all the inflammation. And when the body is healing for the inflammation, its focus is not on weight loss. It's to heal you. And then the weight loss goes down. Mm -hmm. Then the clothes start fitting better. I start feeling better mood and everything. So this is what I did every single day. And I, I did a lot of self-compassion, which by the way, is doesn't mean you are selfish. We can talk about self-compassion and selfishness uh, later. Did that answer that question for you, Jackie? Absolutely. And I, I appreciate it because I've been through a little bit of a dietary trial myself. And I've learned a lot of things over the last 10 years that have really helped me. So it sounds, I, you can see results very quickly. In fact, I, I remember seeing results after three days where I was having this chronic shoulder pain and don't, with no explanation, it wasn't an injury or anything like that. And when I changed my diet, it was gone in three days. It was just gone in three days. Are you, are you hundred percent plant-based Jackie or? Um, mostly I'm about 80% plant-based. I will have some chicken or beef on occasion, but it's very rare. And in fact, this week I'm on a five day one for five days, every month, I go on a complete vegan diet and I only get about 700 to 900 calories a day. And it's a way that my body sort of resets itself. Purges. Yeah. And so this is, I'm in the second day of a five day, what I call a, a fast mimic, a fast mimic. So yeah, but it's, it works. It's great. What I found Celine was that a lot of the foods I was eating that were not necessarily unhealthy foods, but they were causing inflammation. And so this inflammation was a chronic injury happening in my gut or other parts of the body, which of course would cause more inflammation because inflammation really actually is the cause of all disease, inflammation. And so when you have inflammation in your body, you're going to be diseased somewhere. And uh, when, I just, when I started getting rid of the foods that were causing me personally to have inflammation, what a difference it made. Absolutely. And I love, I love the fact that you said me personally. Uh, I love the work of, of uh, Ashley Koff. She's a registered dietitian who believes in personalized nutrition. So people listening, you have to understand the concept. You have 80,000 food out there in five groups. You want to eat from every groups as whole as possible. And we'll talk about proce what processing does to food. Now in those groups, find the one that works for your body. For example, as whole food as I am, I am still allergic to apples. I don't know why I am allergic to apples. So I don't eat apples. So, so not eating apples works for me. My husband cannot live without apple. He will take <laughs> He will take his apple, he will pour some cinnamon on it, and he will eat it. You know, I look at him and he looks so happy, and I'll be so jealous. How come he can have an apple and I cannot have a, any? But it works for him. So remember that concept of personalized nutrition. Go for a food in each five groups that you enjoy eating. Oh, Jackie, we're not talking enough about pleasure. You see? Mm. This doctor, Dr. Doug Lyle, uh, and um, 
Alan Goldhammer wrote one of the best book, I believe, to help people, The Pleasure Trap. Understand that at the end of the day, when it comes to, to nutrition, it's about pleasure. I'll give you a small anecdote. I have, he told me that I can share that. I have a friend of mine who is a professor of the Department of Nutrition in a university in the Ivory Coast. He has diabetes and was not following his nutrition regimen. And I asked him, come on, buddy, you are the head of nutrition, you know? And he looked at me he's like, Mrs. Brozovich, the food that she gave me is not good. Doesn't taste good, it's bland. And I'm like, what? So I asked his wife, she was giving him the beans in the can, the green beans in the can. Mm. Oh yeah, that thing is blah. And I told her, and I'm like, let's, why don't we do the following? Take that green beans, okay? And get, let's get some fresh one, okay? Boil them, steam them. I don't, that, I, I don't really care at that point. Add some garlic. Add a little bit of um, black pepper. Add some parsley. So a few drops of lemon or uh, balsamic vinegar. Toss the whole thing. And if, because he's African, he likes spicy, add a little bit of hot pepper in it and give it to that man. If he doesn't eat, come and talk to me. You're making my mouth water. <laughs> so he's <laughs> like, oh, voila. So but the same food, by using some spices, we mm -hmm. turn that food into a delicacy, into something that he will enjoy. And oh, yeah. by the way, eating a whole food plant based nutrition doesn't mean eating green salads. You have plenty of food that you can eat that are delicious, 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 delicious. <laughs> so do not forget pleasure in your eating. Yeah. Let me stop here. <laughs> That's an important one. Yeah, because well, I find that there's so many things I'm denied because of my dietary issues that the one pleasure I can have is dark chocolate. So once in a while <laughs> I have, but it's gotta be like 70% or more, 72% actually cocoa or more. And it, and it can't have soy in it. So I've got it. So I, I have to chew very carefully, but that is my one bit of pleasure that I can have on occasion is a little bit of dark chocolate. <laughs> Let me boost that pleasure for you. Now imagine Trader Joe's has 100% dark chocolate, nothing added, just the cocoa. Now take that cocoa and take some figs because you like the figs mm -hmm. or some date, wrap it around it and eat it. Mm. You, are, you are now eating 100% cocoa with a sweetener that is 100% yeah. whole food plant based mm. and oh, it is delicious. This is how I eat my chocolate in yeah. here. So <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta just find the pleasure. <laughs> you have to find the pleasure. Well, let's, let's talk about another one that I think America is addicted to. I think it's a, and it's a huge health problem and causes so many problems in, in, in a lot of different people. And that is that S word, Celine. Yes, Whatever. white sugar. Uh, Dr. Yadlin, a doctor wrote a book, pure, white and deadly. Mm. Yes, that white stuff is pure, it is white, it's deadly. And it is as addictive as cocaine. Yeah, it really? That's the reason, oh yes. Mm. Look at the, the research from Dr. Lustig. The research is clear. It is as addictive as cocaine. That's the reason why we cannot stop. Yeah. And that's the reason why when you want to go, you really have to try to clean it and remove it and not even create like, oh, willpower and this type of things. It, it, this is lethal. That white sugar, when you see what it does to our body, uh, let me tell you a story. I go to a store on uh, a, 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 a store on Saturday because my daughter wanted something, so it's an African store. So I get in the store, I take my stuff, and I see this lady. She has a beautiful 10-year-old, and she had two sodas. 
I tap on her shoulder and I'm like, mom, I have to talk to you. Please don't buy that. This is not good. No, this is not good for your daughter. I'm sorry I am intruding, but this is what I do for living. I just finished a talk at Microsoft teaching those engineers how to get rid of white sugar. So please, ma'am. And I'm like, okay, here is a video. I am legit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love the it. beauty is she look at me and I'm like, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, she look at me, I look beautiful, I look healthy. And she didn't buy those two things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, come and meet my husband. And the little girl, she, they came, she met, they met my husband and we start talking to them. People are not educated. It, we have to talk more about that. Raise the awareness, get people to understand that that white sugar it's poison that you are putting in your mouth. There is nothing good about it. As soon as it hits your tongue, you have that insulin that is spiking and that yo-yo spiking and dropping is creating so much problems. So for the people who are listening to us today, please try everything. Stay away from the white sugar, the high corn fructose syrup, the uh, agave nectar, all of those things. There is nothing good in there for your health, for your customers if, uh, and people listening. If you want, because we are all addicted to that sugar, go for a, a fruit, a whole fruit. It's sweet, but not only is it sweet, it has fiber, it has vitamins, it has mineral. Every bite of that apple, your body is rejoicing and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's true. No, no, you, I, I love apples. And I can, I can tell you, you know, a, a good apple just, well, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And that's true. An apple a day will keep that doctor away. And if you make it an apple, a banana, an orange, and you diversify it, and you add even the berries, whoa, you even keep the surgeon away. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about dates? You talk a lot about dates and 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 how do you 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 I've heard you talk about crafting a special little treat. Cause I like to come home and maybe have you know, a cinnamon disc or something sugary, that white sugar, because I'm addicted to it, obviously. What, what, what is something we can substitute that little treat with? Okay, so your first substitution, if you want sweet, is going to be a whole fruit. Why a whole fruit? Because one apple is 80% water. So you want the whole fruit. It's sweet, it has fiber, mineral, and vitamins. Now, if you want to get some treats and all, instead of using white sugar, use date and mix it. For example, I'll give you a recipe right there to make your own no-bake um, spread brownies. Oh, brownies. Yeah, take your brownies, Take some walnuts and take your 100% cocoa powder and some date. Mix the whole thing into uh, your blender. When you take it, you mash it. You have brownies right there with zero sugar, just using the date. Mm. So walnuts, 100% uh, cocoa, cocoa powder, date. And then you can add a little bit of vanilla, a little, uh, anytime you use uh, uh, chocolate or co cocoa based thing, add always a pinch of salt because the salt will boost the taste mm. and add some cinnamon and add some, a little bit of clove because those spices not only make it good, but they give you some antioxidant. So imagine now you eating a brownie that is actually healing you. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing that's and awesome. you're making my wild mouth water again <laughs> yeah now aren't there some fruits though that that do contain a lot of sugar even though it, it's a natural form of sugar isn't it still sugar or not uh, uh, i don't like to say still sugar so when you're doing fruits okay don't go for the dry fruit. The only dry fruit you want to have is your date because you're using that for, to replace the sugar in the thing. But go for the whole fruit 
And how is the body reacting to the sweetness in a whole apple compared to white sugar? So when you have the white sugar on your tongue, your body, your brain tell the pancreas to shoot some insulin to go and process that sugar that is coming. So the insulin goes in a spike and it then drops, mm. okay? And that white sugar has only the bad carb in it, 100% carb. Now, let's take the sugar that is in the apple. When the, 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 the body, the brain will detect the sweet when you have the bite, but instead of the insulin shooting, the insulin will be released slowly because of the fiber in your apple. So you are not going to have the crash after you've eaten mm. an apple, the same way you have a crash after you've drunk, you, you have, you, you've been drinking uh, some soda because yeah. the body processes them entirely differently. Did I answer yeah. that question? Oh, Without yeah. getting into, voila. Yeah, I mean, there's such a difference that you can see in children when you give them a little cookie as opposed to giving them an apple. I mean, the cookie, I've literally seen kids just go nuts <laughs> with a little bit of sugar in their system. And like you say, then they always fall. Then they become tired and irritable and they become angry and unwilling you know, to obey rules and things like that. And it's really, it's the sugar. It's the sugar that they're getting, right? And I mean, even at schools, they give them sugar. And I think that's probably one of the worst things we can give kids is sugar. Yeah, this is one of the worst things we can give to our children. And we have as mothers to protest and to tell the schools, don't feed my, my kids any sugar. I will send them the, there. It's a big problem also because mm -hmm. you know, people will tell you, yeah, but you know, uh, the, the school meal is subsidized and the uh, fruits uh, uh, cost a lot of money. That between the two of us, when you start looking closely, okay, a pound of meat is much more expensive than buying an apple. So, uh, uh, so uh, take a pound of beans that are loaded with a whole bunch of good things, it's much cheaper than a pound of meat. So that money that you are not using to buy your meat, your chicken, you can use part of that money to buy beans and to buy some fresh fruits. Mm -hmm. So when you sit, and uh, some people have uh, specialized actually in that, when you sit and you start looking and on where to allocate the money, you can see that if you really want to do it, there is a way to do it, mm -hmm. to eat wow. healthy. Yeah. And sugary sugary drinks are a huge part of our society and and our kids. It's just it's prevalent everywhere. And you see all the advertisements and you walk in the store and there's just racks after racks of sugary, sugary drinks. Well, in the baby food aisle, they give you a choice of apple juice and, and juices like that to give to your baby. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it is sad. Uh, actually, let me share a number with you. In 1900, an American was eating five pounds of sugar per year. Today, give me a, a number, how many pounds of sugar per year that one American is eating? Wow. Uh, 25. 25. 190 pounds. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So we're eating sugar and it, it is in everything. When you go in that supermarket, 80% of the food in there has sugar in it. And guess what? They hide the name. Do you know how many different names of sugar are in there? I don't know, 10? 61. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 61. Wow. According to the University of California in San Francisco, 61. And they hide it. They have a vicious way of hiding it into the food. So if you don't know how to read those labels, you're going to see that, oh, the first ingredient is this. It's like, no, what about the third? What about the seventh? What about yeah. the ninth? What about the 12th? So when you add all of those things, the first ingredient is going to be sugar. So you have to know how to, to be a detective, get educated on how to recognize that sugar in the food that you are buying. Well, that's so true because it seems like a few years ago, there was a big kick on non-fat, 
you know, get rid of the fat in your diet. And, and everybody was buying non-fat milks and yogurts and things like that, but not looking at the sugar content because they had to add sugar to make, make it, it palatable, taste. right? Yep. But so it seems to me like it's, it's actually a conspiracy to some degree that these food makers, these food product makers know that sugar is addicting. And so they've got to keep the, their products flying off the shelves. And so in order to do that, they've got to get people addicted to that so that they keep buying it. I mean, yep. that sounds pretty sinister, but it sounds like it could actually be happening. But the best data scientist produced in the world, you know who they work for? They work for the food company. Mm -hmm. Because the, you, the best marketeers, they work for the, the food company. Do you know that when you take that bag of potato chips, from the time you've taken that bag to the time you open it, everything, they've worked on every single thing is done in such a way that when you open that bag, you have to finish that bag. Mm, yeah. The crunchiness, the smell, the taste, the everything on that bag is done in such a way that you have to finish that bag. So if you finish it, you're going to buy more. Buy another yeah. one. Voilà. Yeah. So we are all against, it's a huge fight. And I'm telling people, when it comes to you, your health is your gift to you, work on it. Your family watch over them, but it can it just have to be by invitation. But when it comes to your young children, mothers, fathers, you have a responsibility to feed them properly and to educate them. Yeah. The statistic is very gloomy. Uh, I, I teach at the hospital with Dr. Clay. And one of the thing, one of the stats that makes me angry is one out of three children born today is going to have diabetes. Mm. One out of three? One out of three, yes. Wow. It's like, why? Because as a society, we've decided that, you know, we want to be rich, we want to be fast, we want to not do, take the time to sit down and chop the vegetables, we want to do what? It's not fair to our kids, it's not fair to future generation. Yeah. We all have to wake up and do something about it. Well, and ignoring this one pillar affects the other pillars that you mentioned too, because I know that if you're not feeling good physically, it's really hard to feel spiritually well and mentally well. So it sounds to me, Celine, like you're saying that if you're going to start making changes, the first change that you can make to see immediate results and to get uh, a better feeling about trying something else is, is your diet. That changing, so, changing your diet is the first thing to do. Is that correct? Uh, um, I don't want to go that uh, dramatic because okay. remember we are all different. Yeah. Um, I will say the first thing to do is to be aware that mm -hmm. change is needed and that you have the pillars and go for the low hanging fruits. Go for the low-hanging fruit. Is the lack of uh, exercise, you know, walking a little bit, is it what you can do immediately? The beauty is each one of them, they are so intertwined. As soon as uh, I represent that actually uh, on my website as a, as a set of gears, as soon as you move one, you start moving all the others. Mm -hmm. They all come together. But food, for the one who can go to the food and please, don't start, don't jump into it to say, oh, I am going to be a vegan today. No, <laughs> it could be overwhelming. So please take the time, educate yourself, know what you are doing. We've all, all heard about the, the fact of vegan. What is the difference between veganism and whole food plant-based eating? Veganism is a social movement. It's for people who are passionate about the environment, about animals, about the climate. They happen to eat plant-based, but their first um, motivation is not health. It is for their passion. So a vegan could eat, for example, Oreos. Why? Because Oreos is plant-based. 
But mm. Oreos is one of the worst thing you can put into your mouth. Mm. There's nothing good in that Oreos, nothing. Yeah. But a whole food plant base is not going to touch Oreos. We're going to go for the whole fruit. So if you want to do that change, please educate yourself. You have, pl- the, you have some people like myself, like some other doctors and the, the other coaches who've made it very simple. Take the time, understand what you are doing. And if somebody come to you and tell you that one food is a superfood, look at that person straight in the eyes and say, you are a liar, said mm-hmm. Celine. There is not such a thing as a superfood. It's about understanding that we have 80,000 food in five groups and eating each one of a little bit of the five groups every day. Don't rush if you don't know what you're doing. Take the time to educate yourself. Take the time to love yourself, to go slowly. Let me stop there. It's, it's, <laughs> such, it's such a great um, field that, but I want people to be successful. Please, totally. please go slow, educate yourself, go at your own pace. And I'll share that one in here, Todd, before giving you the mic. You have five ways of getting started, okay? If you listen here to say, gee, I can get rid of, you know, uh, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, lose weight. Yes, you can. It is in your lifestyle. So you have five ways. Make it kind of short. We only have about three minutes left. So you know, you know what I suggest is yeah. you come back on Life Mastery Radio. Would you do that? We <laughs> do that again every single day. We need people to be healthy. So oh, I know. And you know, another one of those low-hanging fruits that you talked about is just hydration. <clears throat> yes. Water, 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 drink water, drink, drink it as, you know, a herbal tea, drink your water, get that hydration going. Yes. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today and showing up as you and bringing that big smile. Look at that great smile. That is just so <laughs> awesome. I bet that smile takes you places or has taken you places. <laughs> it's when you eat that food, it's good food, good mood. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you again for showing up as you. And uh, did you have fun on our show today? Yes, I did. It's been an hour. Boy, yeah. I knew I could talk, but not that much. <laughs> You're a Toastmaster at heart. That's that's truly yeah. what it is. Oh my goodness, Jackie! Any takeaways? I know you you are a, you you have watched your diet. You didn't. You had to take it for a while, though. You tried this and tried that and did this and did that. There was no magic, right? There was no magic. It's experimentation. It's it's journaling to, to determine what your reaction is to different foods. But once you find the foods that you shouldn't have, then you just don't have them anymore. You, but you do have to find a replacement for them. Because right. if you don't find a replacement for the foods you can't have, then eating is, is like Celine says, it's not fun anymore. It's not pleasurable. And so you need to do, you need to find ways to make it, things taste good for sure. We're going to have Celine back. I think we'll put her back in the schedule and figure that out. What do you think, Jackie? Absolutely. Okay. Sure. That's about all we have time for today. I hope you had fun. Check out our website. Check out our Facebook page. Check out Jackie and I's books. Check out check out Celine. Celine has a really cool website with some more information. And Celine, what's that website? Uh, to make it easy, from how? to wow and ah. two is number two yeah ww from how to wow dot nice. com very cool nice. very cool and thank you again for showing up as you that's about all we have time for today i hope you enjoyed the show please tell your friends about the show and the cool thoughts and ideas that you got to hear that you're going to use on your very own life mastery journey lastly please please make it a great day because it is all about choice and choose to eat healthy. Get rid of that. Get rid of that white sugar. Bye-bye. Happy birthday, Todd. (laughs) Happy birthday, Todd. (laughs) Thanks. both. Thank you for tuning into Life Mastery.